A legend at least has it that due to a prediction 12 years before his birth, that he would be either a universal monarch or a great sage, Siddhartha Gautama was not allowed to go outside the palace grounds. But at the age of 30, he left anyway one day with a chariot driver and was shocked by what he saw, a sick person, a dying person, and a corpse. The driver explained to him that everyone experienced these three states. On the way back, they also passed a wandering mendicant with a begging bowl. That night, Siddhartha secretly left the palace to become one himself. The fact of his having to face sickness, old age, and death, however, was not behind what I, why I started to sit, and it probably is the same for most of you. What Siddhartha was said to have observed wasn't someone dying, but the body of someone who had died. From doing Zazen, though, we find ourselves in the present with very clear minds. In this essential experience of reality, who we are isn't in the past and future, but in each moment. From this, Dogen Zenji came to understand that life does not become death. Being alive in each moment, there is no time in us in which we are dying. Our death doesn't appear until after the moment when we have stopped living. It follows that before then, there was no point in life in which death is experienced. While our body may be changing, right up until when the spark of life isn't reignited, we are only alive. There is life and death, but in the midst of life, there is only living. And now I have gotten to old age. I mentioned previously that my getting sick a year and a half ago was the first time that I surprised myself by noticing that I was old. It wasn't that I had been letting mirrors lie to me, but that I, that I had had a certain energy until then that had always made me feel young. Our minds will reason whatever they will. We may have worried about this or that with respect to dying, but the truth is that we will never be dying in that all that we can experience is living. What happens that should be of little concern to us, apart from feeling bad for the effect that our death will have on others. Living is all we actually have. Of course, it might be said instead that we have been dying from the moment of our birth. Nevertheless, living beings want to go on living, almost as if they feel obliged to stay alive. Their implementing this entails avoiding death. Well, this is maybe, while it is maybe this that leads some to worry about dying, being alive is all we can ever be. Even if on the so-called edge of death, we are still just living. In most Buddhist cultures, a, a common belief in reincarnations has had a strong, such a strong influence on previous generations that some today will still claim that one cannot be a Buddhist without having a belief 
in reincarnation. Moreover, most Americans anyway, by believing in life after death, assume that this is how life gets to continue. Whether we happen to believe that there is a heaven or not is beside the point here. As would be my boring you with a list of the ir irritants that old age can impose on us. Nevertheless, while the present may be where we suffer, we Zen Buddhists cannot help but learn from sitting that right now, wherever that is, is where we can be truly alive. In that right now. Thanks. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Let's get Jean over here. Oh. Okay, there we are. Yes, Mike. Oh, well, I consider that was a very appropriate talk. Um, I realized that all we have is the moment. All we got is this moment. And that fear is lurking in the background. But as long as I keep it in the background, it's not it's not a real problem. Mm -hmm. But it's difficult. You know, when you start to realize you're closer to death than you are to birth, you know, if you're we're all, you know, getting pretty close to that. And like you, it's like all of a sudden you it's kind of a shock. You're like, oh wow, uh, I need to pay attention to those things a little bit differently. And living in the moment is all we have. It's all we, we're training or trying to do with our studies, it seems like, is be here now, you know, be in this moment. Future is whatever it is. The past is already gone. But it's, it's a, it, you know, it's, I think everybody has that problem that they, they realize that, you know, we're not immortal, you know, and um, I really don't have a question, but I just wanted to say thank you for your, for your discussion. Yeah. Well, let's see. Now I'm 85. Half of that would be 42 and a half. So from your conclusion, I've been dying for since I was 42 and a half, which would put me about the time of Jane's birthday. <laughs> but has no has no meaning whatsoever. But um, yeah, of course, of course. And uh, uh, and as I, and you know, it's natural, we're supposed to fear death. It's in the genes, as it were, of all living things, even plants, probably, uh, according to at least one person's research uh, uh, years ago. But, but it really is, you know, we are, we are only alive. There is no death for us. We will never be dead. We won't we'll know we are dead. No, no, we will never be dead because we don't know it. Yeah. You know, some people worry about uh, heaven, not here. But some people can worry about, you know, not heaven or getting to heaven, although that's changed in, in my lifetime. When I was a kid, uh, hell was still a, a large thing in the talks of of ministers and priests, um, uh, but you know, but but basically, it's just you know, in our DNA to to have to we have to stay alive, and, and that means not that means not dying. But in reality, in our name of reality in Buddhism, there you know, as Dogen said, life does not become death. There's life and there's death. No, he, he, uh, the, the image he uses is of firewood. It's a very famous section uh, from the Genjo Koan, um, uh, in which he said, in which he, he proves that, uh, by saying, um, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that firewood lives in, 
I've forgotten the exact word here, which is a very important word, but in the, but in its, uh, a firewood exists only in the, only as firewood. And ash, which is of course the result of, fire, of, of it, of burning it, only exists in ash. Now it's also true that firewood becomes ash, but in the, rea but in the spiritual reality, no, firewood is firewood, ash is ash, and they each live in their own reality. And so, so, and so for example, although this is different in America, it's kind of funny, because uh, we'll study this uh, if we read part of uh, the, um, uh, the part of the, of the Genjo Cohen. There's a, there's a description of this uh, that takes place in the book we're reading now. Well, it isn't the Gendra Cohen, it's the, it's the mountains and rivers or, or mountain and water sutra. Um, but, and, and so uh, in Japanese, they don't say spring becomes summer. Apparently in English we do, but in Japanese they don't. Spring is independent, summer is independent, life is independent, death is independent. We are only life. It's like, it's like the two sides of a coin. One side's birth, one side's death. We're the middle. We're the, we're the part between. It's all the same object. No, we're not no. the part between. Not the part okay. between. Now, once again, of course, I'd be foolish to say, Mike, you're never going to die. <laughs> I mean, of course, I'm going to die, you're going to die, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and, uh, but, but, but really, we don't have, and, and we do worry about it because we're supposed to, because of nature, but there really is nothing to fear. And that's what our practice tells us. So we're not in the middle of anything. We are. We're here. In that moment, there's no past and no future. Yeah, that's just like that. Past, past is independent. Present is independent. Future is independent. We're going now. We're right. just here. We're in the present. Okay. And that's exactly what we practice in Buddhism. We practice exactly by, by seeing or by actually in our ordinary life, ultimately, we practice being where we are, which is in the moment. It's being where we are. That why they call it like samadhi when you're meditating, because you're in the moment. You're, you're just, you are. There is no time, there's no future, there's no past, there's no nothing. It's just you sitting. Yes, and then that's in then that's in the moment. And that's 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 very true. But there's also but it doesn't it's not and that's so we train in samadhi. But samadhi is the way practice wheels. Because we're training for living. We, we train we train to be who we are. We are life. Is what Dogen says, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Mitch. Um yes. Um yes. No, no, Mitch. No. <laughs> I had to unmute. Sorry. I had to unmute. I, I don't want to be argumentative okay. or anything, but I'm okay. no, what, no, what, about, what what about water? Water is vapor, it's liquid, and it's solid all at the same time. Are we, are, you know, isn't the, the blossom in the bud? I mean, aren't we, aren't we alive and dead at the same time? And this is only, this is only in the material world anyway, right? Does that make any well, sense? Well, when you're, when you, let's say in the, uh, in the absolute, at least in Buddhism, you're, you know, that's not it either. The absolute, you know, the absolute is, you know, uh, water, by the way, is, you know, I, I carefully said every living thing, I think, because, uh, because the, because the metaphor doesn't extend to water, actually. That's, that's just how it is. But, 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 but so, It doesn't doesn't a blossom 
Doesn't a bud hold a blossom and a blossom holds a fruit? Well, you know, th that is true. But once again, when, I, when I'm out, I, I, I got, now is the time down here when there are a lot of flowers. Okay, so all over the place, but I mean, all over the north and all over the coast. But anyway, there are a lot of flowers now. And there are the flowers. I don't think about the, about the I mean, I, those happens by chance. There's a history. There is a past. Uh, uh, Spencer, Spencer and I uh, worked in the garden. Spencer was the leader, actually. I was his assistant. Uh, but I did the, but I planted flowers. I did that by myself with Jane. Uh, and, uh, and that's what there is. Right now, there's flowers. Nothing else, just flowers. There's that, that side is true also. Both sides are true. Remember, the, remember, Sukhumar, she said, I, I just said this, if, maybe even last week, maybe. The Sukhumar, she said, we're very lucky. I mean, because Buddhism <coughs> never says there's one thing in the sense of <clears throat> there's always another side. I think when, when you, and so therefore, even though what I said is just true, what you said is also true, Mitch. Snuck out of that one, huh? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, Chris. So, um, I was listening to the firewood ash thing that you were saying, and it occurred to me that firewood can't become ash, except for the fact that fire burns it. And it's because of fire that wood is transformed into ash. Yes. So I was wondering, does that feature in to the metaphor at all with regards to our life and our the, the future corpse form that we'll take on? I was thinking like, whatever is the experience of the universe through an alive body is transforming that body into a corpse eventually. Uh, I just thought it sounded cool to think like we're on fire, <laughs> but like in a good way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we're burning. Of course, we're, we're, we're burning. Right now, I'm burning. I'm burning energy. <laughs> you know, the, the little molecules of whatever it is is, is getting eaten, get, which is burning. It's being destroyed okay? to make energy, which is then used up. Okay. Yeah, all that's true. But but and once again, metaphors always get us in trouble mm. because they are always relative to the situation yeah. they don't extend for you and so uh it, it and it here it, it doesn't work and he was also trying to explain why life is independent and death is independent and so therefore he didn't have a there was no in that metaphor there's no middle But anyway, yeah, 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 we are burning. Yeah, yeah. There was a sutra that said, my eyes are burning, my heart is burning, you know, and, <laughs> and all this. And it was, you know, how it's all the energy that you use to live in life, but it's also not burning. It's also calm. And it's one of the things about Zen that's so difficult to deal with is the yes and no is and is not, and accepting the fact that it's both, that something can be both, you know, and so. I can't remember who quoted that, and I'm probably misquoting that line, but it, you know, it was a sutra I was watching on YouTube, reading, you know, listening to, and I said, my eyes are burning, and my brain's burning, or something like that, and my heart is, my, no, my heart's burning, my brain is burning, my eyes are cold. And it's like, you have emotions, you have, you know, desires, to, but what you see is just what you see, and your, your feelings, hot or cold, don't match, you know, it's just, I'm probably totally destroyed the sutra, but I, I, I just saw that when you were talking about it. <laughs> well, I don't know about that one. Uh, uh, oh, they just sh shifted on me. Anyway, okay, yes. Uh, Rachel? Thank you, Peter. Oh, let me lower the hand. Okay, there it goes. Uh, 
with human humans life includes consciousness usually or we think <laughs> we think we're not alive if we're not conscious i i'm really curious um if you can have um part of you that dies and yet still live even if one like uh I have one part in my heart that some time ago I had an event. At any rate, um, it is functionally really not alive, this one little part, you know, because it's blocked anyway. But I'm certainly alive. My heart is doing okay, you know, doing fine. But it is a strange sensation to think something just died. <laughs> my <laughs> one little corner in my heart isn't, is in dark, you might say. But consciousness, consciousness, human beings now, <laughs> you know, you can really be kept alive when your consciousness, what we would call sentience, is gone. I mean, I'm, I, I really love to talk. I'm, I'm trying to understand life if that doesn't include what we normally call consciousness. It's kind of a, a comment, but I mean it as a question. If you know what, if you understand what I mean, if if the body is kept alive, but the brain is really not. And you ask me about what is the definition of death? I mean, well, <laughs> yes, yes, really. I, I kind of mean that. Is that, is that still life? Um, well, of course, once again, I, uh, it's obviously going to fracture my metaphor, uh, if I, <laughs> or Dogen's <Sorry>. metaphor. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and so, um, well, you know, there's a, there is a, there's a situation that I read about in, uh, uh, in the, um, in, uh, I heard Dalai Lama talk about, because I was listening to the meeting, actually. Uh, and, um, and and he said that he and he had a, he had a, a, a book I guess but I read it I read it I heard it uh, in in which he talked about that every day as his practice he practices dying so it's very different okay this is very different now he practices dying and I guess not just he I think this is what in his sect what people do. They practice dying, and then he described all the things, the steps to which you die. One was you see a cloud, and there, there were seven or eight of them. I've forgotten what they are. But actually, but after that, uh, if 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 a, if, a, if if a sage dies, I don't know if it's a sage or not, but some people, well, a sage dies, but in particular. Uh, they don't they don't uh, call him dead because they feel that his consciousness is living on after his life and it lives on for up to a week now i've never heard that before in my life uh, i just and i just read about it then but that's that's also something about death anyway but not for us of course i mean it could be for us i say not for us but we don't have that formal explanation that someone could be alive after they have died. Uh, whatever that leads to. <laughs> Jane, you got anything to add to this? Jane? <laughs> um, I can add a little bit. I think Peter's mostly covered it, but <laughs> I would just say that uh, we have inherent life in us also. The possibility of all things as well as what we are at the moment. Uh, uh, for example, we have inherent in us the, the enlightened living, and we have uh, dying as well. Um, but uh, for example, if we were to compare ourselves to a plant, yes, I would say the fruit and the bud and the stamp, everything is already present in the tiniest thing, tiniest part, I think. 
but uh, whether it will manifest fully or not is dependent on what happens to that fact and, and how it copes with it. So what we have is the possibility of all things, but we have to deal with it, you know, in an enlightened way or in a way which is Clear. I'm thinking of Siddhartha Rishi's comment that we're perfect already, but we could use a little improvement. <laughs> so we have to work at it no matter what. But yes, I think it's all already inherent in it. It's all things, the fruit, the flower, all of it. And we can manifest any of it by our own determination. It's up to us, but what we finally do. So, I don't know what the definition of living and death is, except perhaps death to me means the end of determination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, other than that, I don't know how much to say about it. That we do have the possibility of every possibility in us, and that is our inherent life. And what we do with that is our is what is who we are, how we live our life. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Shall we express our life through chanting and bowing? I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs>